Hi there, and welcome to our podcast. And this week at London Visited, we go to Battersea, made famous by a power station and also a dog's home, to tell you all about this iconic part of London. My name is Steve, and each week I will bring to you the facts, history, and information about different parts of this great capital. If you've been to London, are planning on visiting, live here, or just love London from afar, then this is the podcast for you. Don't forget to visit our YouTube channel, London Visited, to see videos covering this place and so many others across London. And now to this week's podcast. Battersea is a large district of southwest London, in the London borough of Wandsworth. It is centred 3.5 miles southwest of Charing Cross and extends along a curve that includes a west bank on the south bank of the London reaches of the Thames. It includes Battersea Park, a 200-acre northern rectangle by the Thames. The ancient parish turned district has remained only in a few non-administrative terms in a part of Surrey since 1889, when the County of London began and became the administrative county. Among these terms are mainly traditional sports, most especially county cricket. Battersea was for many centuries since the 9th century, centred on many of its cottages which stood by the then-founded St Mary's Church. This hub stood in the High Middle Ages, such as four centuries later, on a dike-drained set of fields near the mouth of the Falconbrook. This was a brook that rose in Tooting Beck Common and flowed through Tooting and the west of Clapham and finally Battersea into the tidal Thames. Battersea is mentioned in a few surviving Anglo-Saxon geographical accounts as Basides Teg, meaning Badrick's Island, and later Patrasy. As with many former parishes beside tidal floodplains, the lowest land was reclaimed for agriculture by draining marshland and building culverts for streams. Alongside this was the Heath Wall Tide Mill in the northeast, with a very long mill pond regularly drained and filling to the south. The settlement appears in the Doomsday Book as Patrasy, a vast manor held by St Peter's Abbey, Westminster. Its Doomsday assets were 18 hides and 7 ploughlands of cultivated land, 7 mills worth 42 pounds, 9 shillings and 8 pence per year, 82 acres of meadow, woodland, worth 50 hogs. It rendered in total 75 pounds, 9 shillings and 8 pence. The present church, which was completed in 1777, hosted the marriage of William Blake and Catherine Nee Butcher in 1782. Benedict Arnold, his wife Peggy Shippen and their daughter were buried in its crypt. Battersea Park, a 200-acre northern rectangle by the Thames, was landscaped and founded for public use in 1858. Amenities and leisure buildings have been added to it since. The parish included, as a detached part, a few hundred acres known as Penge, including part now of the modern-turned place Crystal Palace. The borough dates from the London Government Act of 1899 and includes the greater part of the original ecclesiastical parish of St Mary Battersea. Under the same act, Penge, formerly a hamlet of Battersea, was constituted a separate urban district. The curious anomalies of local government led to its Penge formation as a separate urban district and its transfer to the county of Kent in 1900, which would join London with neighbouring parishes in 1965. Penge was a wooded district over which the tenants of Battersea Manor had common of pasture. Before the Industrial Revolution, much of the large parish was farmland, providing food for the City of London and surrounding population centres, and with particular specialisms, such as growing lavender on Lavender Hill, nowadays denoted by the road of the same name, asparagus, soldiers, Battersea bundles, or pig breeding on Pig Hill, later the site of the Shaftesbury Park estate. At the end of the 18th century, above 300 acres of land in the parish of Battersea were occupied by some 20 market gardeners, who rented them from 5 to near 60 acres each. Villages in the wider area, Wandsworth, Earlsfield, Hamlet of Garrett, Tooting, Ballam, were separated by fields. In common with other suburbs, the wealthy of London and traditional manor successors built their homes in Battersea and neighbouring areas. Industry in the area was concentrated to the northwest, just outside the Battersea Wandsworth boundary, at the confluence of the River Thames and the River Wandle, which gave rise to the village of Wandsworth. This was settled from the 16th century by Protestant craftsmen, Huguenots, fleeing religious persecution in Europe, who planted lavender and gardens and established a range of industries such as mills, breweries and dyeing. 
bleaching and calico printing. Industry developed eastwards along the bank of the Thames during the Industrial Revolution from the 1750s onwards. The Thames provided water for transport, for steam engines and for water-intensive industrial processes. Bridges erected across the Thames encouraged growth. Putney Bridge, a mile to the west, was built in 1729 and rebuilt in 1882. The Battersea Bridge in the centre of the north boundary in 1771. Inland from the river, the rural agricultural community persisted. Along the Thames, a number of large and, in their field, preeminent firms grew. Notably, the Morgan Crucible Company, which survives to this day and is listed on the London Stock Exchange. Price's Candles, which also made cycle lamp oil, and Orlando Jones Starch Factory. The 1874 Ordnance Survey map of the area shows the following factories in order from the site of the yet unbuilt Wandsworth Bridge to Battersea Park. Starch Manufacturer, Silk Manufacturer, St John's College, St Mary's Church, Malt House, Corn Mill, Oil and Grease Works, Price's Candles, Chemical Works, Plumago Crucible Works, later the Morgan Crucible Company, Chemical Works, Salt Petra Works, Foundry. Between these were numerous wharfs for shipping. In 1929, construction started on Battersea Power Station, being completed in 1939. From the late 18th century to the comparatively recent times, Battersea, and certainly North Battersea, was establishing as an industrial area with all of the issues associated with pollution and poor housing affecting it. Industry declined and moved away from the area in the 1970s, and local government sought to address chronic post-war housing problems with large-scale clearances and the establishment of planned housing. Some decades after the end of large-scale local industry, resurgent demand among magnets and other high-income earners for Parkside and Riverside property close to planned underground links has led to significant construction. Factories have been demolished and replaced with modern apartment buildings. Some of the council-owned properties have been sold off and several traditional working men's pubs have become more fashionable bistros. Battersea neighbourhoods close to the railway have some of the most deprived local authority housing in the borough of Wandsworth, in an area which saw condemned slums after their erection in the Victorian era. Battersea was radically altered by the coming of railways. London and Southampton Railway Company engineered their railway line from east to west through Battersea in 1838, terminating at the original Nine Elms railway station at the northeast tip of the area. Over the next 22 years, five other lines were built, across which all trains from London's Waterloo and Victoria Termini would, as today, travel. An interchange station was built in 1863 towards the northwest of the area, at a junction of the railway. Taking the name of a fashionable village a mile or more away, the station was named Clapham Junction. A campaign to rename it Battersea Junction fizzled out as late as the early 20th century. During the latter decades of the 19th century, Battersea had developed into a major town railway centre, with two locomotive works at Nine Elms and Long Hedge, and three important motive power depots, Nine Elms, Stewart's Lane, and Battersea, all in an initial pocket of North Battersea. The effect was precipitate. A population of 6,000 people in 1840 was increased to 168,000 by 1910, and save for the green spaces of Battersea Park, Clapham Common, Wandsworth Common, and some smaller isolated pockets, all other farmland was built over, with, from north to south, industrial buildings and vast railway sheds and sidings, much of which remain, slum housing for workers, especially north of the main east-west railway, and gradually more genteel residential terraced housing further south. The railway station encouraged the government to site its buildings in the area surrounding Clapham Junction, where a cluster of new civic buildings, including the town hall, library, police station, court and post office, was developed along Lavender Hill in the 1880s and the 1890s. The Arding and Hobbs department store, diagonally opposite the station, was the largest of its type at the time of its construction in 1885, and the streets near the station developed as a regional shopping district. The area was served by a vast music hall, the Grand, opposite the station, nowadays serving as a nightclub and a venue for smaller bands, as well as a large theatre next to the town hall, the Shakespeare Theatre, later redeveloped following bomb damage. All this building around the station shifted the focus of the area southwards, 
a marginalised Battersea High Street, the main street of the original village, into no more than an extension of Falcon Road. Battersea has a long and varied history of social housing, and the completion of the Shaftesbury Park estate in 1877 was one of the earliest in London, or the UK. Additionally, the development of the Latchmere estate in 1903 was notable both for John Byrne's involvement and for being the first estate directly built by a council's own workforce, and therefore the first true council estate. Indeed, both of these earlier estates have since been recognised as conservation areas due to their historical and architectural significance and are protected from redevelopment. Battersea also has a large area of mid-20th century public housing estates, almost all located north of the main railway lines, a spanning from Fairfield in the west to Queenstown in the east. There are four particularly large estates. The Wynn Stanley Estate, perhaps being the most renowned of them all, is known as being the birthplace to the Garage Collective So Solid crew. Wynn Stanley is close to Clapham Junction Railway Station in the northern perimeter of Battersea and is currently being considered for comprehensive redevelopment as one of the London Mayor's new housing zones. Further north towards Chelsea is the Surrey Lane Estate and on Battersea Park Road is the Doddington and Rollo Estate. East towards Vauxhall is the Patmore Estate, which is in close proximity to Battersea Power Station. Other small estates include York Road, Ashley Crescent, Badrick Court, Carey Gardens, Chatham Road, Ethelburger, Falcon Road, Gideon Road, Honeywell Road, Camballa, Peabody, Robertson Street, Savannah, Somerset, Wildditch and Winter Street. The tradition of local government in England was based in part on manor and later on the parish. Battersea's governance can be traced back to 693 when the manor was held by the nunnery of St Mary at Barking Abbey. After the Norman conquest of 1066, control of the manor was passed to Westminster Abbey, ending at the time of the dissolution of the monasteries in 1540. Battersea was one of only three of the abbey's domain, directly supervised by monks, rather than being let to tenants. Local control rested with an officer appointed by the abbey, variously termed a beadle, reeve or sergeant, whose responsibility it was to supervise the farm servants of the manor and to enforce and direct customary work performed by manorial tenants. After 1540, the crown assumed ownership of the manor and let it on short leases to a succession of individuals until, in about 1590, it came into the hands of the St John family of Leonard Tigers in Wiltshire, who later became the St John Baronets of Leonard Tigers and ultimately the Viscounts of Bolingbrook. Bolingbrooks exercised control of the manor for some 173 years, showing varying levels of interest of the competence in running the estate's affairs, until, in 1763, the disastrously dissolute Frederick St John, second Viscount of Bolingbrook, sold the manor to help settle his many debts. Battersea now passed into the Spencer family, John Spencer, first Earl Spencer, being related to Frederick's wife. The Survey of London identified the period of Frederick's tenure with the development of the vestry in Battersea, Absent, a competent lord of the manor, his local secular and ecclesiastical government took it upon itself to establish a workhouse in 1733 and met monthly from 1742. The period of Spencer ownership of the manor saw important land ownership changes introduced in the area. The family had many estates, such as Orthrop in Northamptonshire and Wiston in Nottinghamshire. Locally, their interests were concentrated on Wimbledon. During their tenure, large tracts of land were sold, notably around 1761, and from 1835 to 1838, leading to the development of the popularity of smaller estates, which had implications for the later development of the area. The scope of governance throughout this period was relatively slight. Lords of the Manor were responsible for church appointments and maintenance of fabric of the church, for drainage, and for the direction of the duties of the manor's tenants. From time to time, Work was done under the manorial direction of the Thames Foreshore, and a Spencer was responsible for the construction of the first local bridge across the Thames, Battersea Bridge, from 1771 to 1772. And albeit Battersea saw some slow change over the first seven centuries of the second millennium, it was not until a later period that an imperative for a greater local government arose. The vestry of Battersea continued to increase in importance from 1742 
notably concerning itself with poor law administration and drainage. Responsibility for the latter was removed from the vestry in 1855, with the establishment of Metropolitan Boards of Work under the Metropolis Management Act 1855. A Metropolitan Board concerned itself with cross-London drainage and sewage, whilst a local Wandsworth Metropolitan Board assumed responsibility for minor sewers and the connection of houses to sewage systems. It was during the tenure of Wandsworth Board that much of Battersea was developed, but such was the pace of development in Battersea that by 1887 it had a population sufficient to win the case for renewed local autonomy under the Metropolis Management, Battersea and Westminster, Act of 1887. The Battersea Vestry continued through to 1899, when it became the Metropolitan Borough of Battersea as a result of the Local Government Act of 1899. The Metropolitan Borough of Battersea was, in 1965, combined with the neighbouring Metropolitan Borough of Wandsworth to form the London Borough of Wandsworth. The former Battersea Town Hall, opened in 1893, is now the Battersea Arts Centre. In the period from 1880 onwards, Battersea was known as the centre of radical politics in the United Kingdom. John Burns founded a branch of the Social Democratic Federation, Britain's first organised socialist political party. In the borough, and after the turmoil of the dock strikes affecting the populace of North Battersea, was elected to represent the borough in the newly formed London County Council. In 1892, he expanded his role, being elected to Parliament for Battersea North, as one of the first independent Labour Party member of Parliament. Battersea's radical reputation gave rise to the Brown Dog Affair, when, in 1904, the National Anti-Vivisection Society sought permission to erect a drinking fountain celebrating the life of a dog killed by vivisection. The fountain, forming a plinth for the statue of a brown dog, was installed in the Latchmere Recreation Ground, became a cause for celebration, fought over in riots and battles between medical students and the local populace until its removal in 1910. The borough elected the first black mayor in London in 1913 when John Archer took office and in 1922 elected a Bombay-born Communist Party member as MP for Battersea, one of the only two Communist members of Parliament. Battersea is a large part of outer, central London on a curved south bank of the River Thames. Battersea's northern limit is thus the Tideway, the Thames below Teddington, proceeding eastwards along the river at Battersea on an ebb tide. It has just ended a curve east. It runs north and about twice as far east. At this end, it has a second apex, leaving Nine Elms at Battersea to run north, passing underneath Vauxhall. Some parts of Battersea have become known for drug dealing. The Winstanley and York Road council estates have developed a reputation for such offences and were included in a zero-tolerance drug exclusion zone in 2007. In recent surveys, Battersea had a population of 73,345 people. The district was 52.2% of white British origin, as against an average for Wandsworth of 53.3%. Within the bounds of modern Battersea are New Covent Garden Market, which is a major fruit and vegetable wholesale market, recited from Covent Garden in 1974, also considered by many to be in Nine Elms. Battersea Power Station, an iconic edifice designed by Sir Giles Gilbert Scott, built between 1929 and 1939, featured with a flying pig on the sleeve art of Pink Floyd's album Animals. There have been a number of failed regeneration projects since the late 1980s, the current proposals are to convert the disused shell into a mass entertainment and commercial complex with dedicated transport links. These transport links are an extension of the Northern Line from Kennington and will be completed in 2021 and open shortly. And the current proposals to use the disused shell have actually been put in place, with many apartment blocks and also entertainment centres. Battersea Dogs and Cats Home, formerly Battersea Dogs Home, and prior to that, the temporary home for lost and starving dogs, established in Holloway in 1860 and moved to Battersea in 1871. It is the UK's most famous refuge for stray dogs and also the main location for ITV's Paul O'Grady for the love of dogs. Battersea Park, a 200-acre green space laid out by Sir James Pennythorne between 1846 and 1864 and opened in 1858 and home to a zoo and the London Peace Pagoda. Shaftesbury Park Estate conservation area consisting of over a thousand Victorian houses preserved in their original style. Battersea Arts Centre, in the former Battersea Town Hall, Clapham Junction Railway Station, by at least one measure, passenger interchanges, 
the busiest station in the UK and named after the neighbouring town of Clapham, although it lays in the geographical heart of Battersea. St Mary's Church, Battersea. Benedict Arnold is buried here. Four stained glass windows celebrate Arnold, William Blake, William Curtis and J. Emma W. Turner. The Sir Walter St John School, now Thomas's Day School, was founded in 1700. Parts of the present building date back to 1859. The London Heliport, London's busiest heliport, sited on the Thames, half a mile north of Clapham Junction Station. So I hope you've enjoyed our look at Battersea, and as you can see through history, it has gone through a variety of different changes. It's also interesting to see that the regeneration that is in place now will see a new underground station reaching Battersea very, very shortly, making it even easier to get out there. So we look forward to that opening very, very shortly on the Northern Line. Whatever podcast service you use to listen to this, please do subscribe to get updates on new shows. And also please do leave us some feedback. Please also let me know any places you'd like us to feature in future podcasts. And you can let me know through our website, www.londonvisited.co.uk. You can email me directly on londonvisited at gmail.com or you can contact us on Twitter and Instagram on at London Visited or alternatively on Facebook on at The London Visited. Thanks very much for listening. Really hope you enjoyed our podcast and we'll see you very soon on the next one. Bye.